Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. In this powerful message, Fundamentals of Spiritual Warfare, Apostle Michael Orokpo equips you for the battles of life. Learn the key principles to stand strong against spiritual challenges. Discover how the Word of God is your ultimate weapon in spiritual warfare. Experience the power of united prayer to overcome any obstacle. Arm yourself with divine strategies for victory, empowering you with the fundamentals of spiritual warfare. The power of the prince of the air. He said, wherein in time past, you walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience. And the same can apply to a believer if he opens the door to Satan. That's why some people think only chaos. They think only breakdown of law and order. They can't seem to do the right thing. Even when they are trying, they are struggling. It's the spirit of lawlessness. It's an attack. And when you are lawless, even God becomes careful to commit things to your trust. He said, cast not holy things to the swine. He will trample it underfoot. Mm. Number three, fear and torment. Now, how do you deal with lawlessness before I proceed? It's by submitting to God. James 4, 7. And also by following those who have a track record of order in their lives. Hebrews 6, 12. It says, follow them who through faith and patience obtain the promise. If you find out that you just love lawlessness, ask God to help you submit to him. He said, when you submit to God, you will resist the devil. Or follow those who have order in their lives. Follow them. As you are following them, listening to them, they are imparting you, you are observing them, you see that your life starts being gathered. That's how you deal with lawlessness. Then you have fear and torment. I've said, I've said that already. Hebrews 2, 14 and 15. For as much then as the children were partakers of flesh and blood, himself likewise took part of the same, that he might deliver them from what? The power of death, even the devil. And he said so that they who for a lifetime were subject to bondage through fear might be delivered. So fear torments people. And I showed you how to break out of it by staying stirred up. 2 Timothy 1, 6 and 7. When you are stirred up, you begin to function by the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Number four, sickness and affliction. These are the things Satan uses. So when you are fighting Satan, you must understand that his battle approach is different from when you are fighting flesh. And it's also different from when you are fighting men, wicked men. Some of us generalize everything. Everything is fall down and die. That's why we are not making progress. Some battles are intrinsic. Like this lawlessness. The devil weaves it into you. You are the architect of your misfortune. So if you are not gathered, no matter the impartation, you will go nowhere. And then fear. People are paralyzed before they start. He is the most qualified person, but he can never see himself make a move. When you talk, he's thinking you are talking to another person. No, you are the one. Stand up. He will stand up. He will be shaking. His voice will be shaking. Uh, oh, oh, uh, yes. Uh, the whole thought will vaporize. Because fear has ensnared him. And that is his opportunity for destiny. So the devil doesn't need to come every night and torment him. He just plants fear in him so that he misses his season. A king shows up. People who should shift him are sitting. They say, sir, what do you have to say? I don't have anything. Before he spoke, his heart came out of his mouth. And windows pass, windows pass. Those sort of people, you will see them, you will think you need to lay hands on them. No, fear, fear, fear has paralyzed them. That's why in, in this place, when we see that people have anything on their life, we push them to the altar. There are some of them, the first time they came to take offering. To walk 
from their seat to the altar is like climbing Mount Everest. And when they carry the mic, they will stutter 30 times in five minutes. I say, stay there. It's either that fear kill you or you kill it. <laughs> After three months, you see them, they now come up and stand like bishops. Can we turn to Malachi? So you too now can say, can we turn? If you don't confront your fears, they will kill you. It's a battle. He wants to deny you of your opportunities. Your seasons will pass. You can't rise. It's a battle. Demons are intelligent. Don't joke with them. Then, poverty. After sickness, you are poverty. See, there are people that are afflicted with chronic poverty. They have the best vision, but nobody can hear it. You know, I pity people who think wealth is all about hard work. I believe in hard work. Oh. I've taught you about universal prosperity. From investments, to giftings, to productivity, to invention, to inheritance. I know all of that. But if Satan is involved, you'll be shocked. There is a spiritual dimension to money and to wealth. There are people that are afflicted, not with sickness, with poverty. Look at Job's life. Everything he had was swept off by Satan. John 10.10, 10, the devil cometh not but for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. That's Satan for you. He makes some people poor. In 1 Thessalonians 2.18, Paul said, we desire to come to see you. But the devil shut the door. So there is a fight against poverty. It's an attack in some cases. When you apply all the universal principles, investment, creativity through wisdom, deploying your gift, and it's not working, check the spiritual side. Something is wrong. This is battle. How do you deal with it? Number one, accept the blessings of the gospel. Accept it. Let it become your reality. 2 Peter 1, 3 says, He has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Accept it. In 1 Corinthians 3, 21, He said, all things are yours. Accept it. He said that the communication of your faith becomes effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you. If you want to fight poverty, accept everything God has given to you. There is a gospel going around now that God does not make men rich. If it is true, then never pray to God to bless you. Because if you pray, you are a hypocrite. You know, when we want to attack ourselves, we become shallow. When Paul said, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. He said, Jesus doesn't make men rich. Jesus' primary objective is not to make you rich. But if you follow Jesus, you can be poor. If you are poor, it's because you choose suffering for the sake of the gospel. Not because there are no principles in scripture to empower you. How can God not bless us and God will be asking us to sponsor his agenda? Is that not tyranny? A God who doesn't bless you is telling you to sponsor global agenda. Where will I get 10 million from to give for crusade? If God does not have a hand in my blessing. When the Bible said, that the blessings of God make it rich and added no sorrow. Be careful. There is a spiritual dimension to poverty. There is also a spiritual dimension to prosperity. I'm not saying because of the spiritual dimension, don't apply the universal dimension. I'm saying in addition to the universal dimension, take advantage of the spiritual dimension. And the first way, is to accept the blessings of the, of, the, of the gospel. The second way is to walk in the covenant. The Bible said in Acts 3.25 that we are children of the covenant. I taught you here that God is not necessarily in covenant with us, but we are offsprings of the covenant. My son will live to do what I do because he's a child of the covenant I have with my wife. Because therein is his blessing. That's why 2 Corinthians 9 from verse 6 to 8, the Bible made it clear. That if you give sparingly, you reap sparingly. If you give bountifully, you reap bountifully. He said, every man as he has proposed in his heart, let him give. He said, for God loves a cheerful giver. And he said, God is able. That means God is not able if you don't give. 
He said, God is able to make all grace abound towards us, that we having all sufficiency in all things may abound in every good work. So you must practice the covenant because it's a battle. And many people don't know that their poverty is not because they are not hardworking. Their poverty is because Satan knows that if they are rich, kingdom will advance. So he crippled their resources. And finally, death. Satan uses death. If he cannot stop you, he wants to kill you. Revelation 2.10, Jesus said they will arrest you, they will imprison you, and they will kill you. Satan wants to kill. So how do you deal with Satan? Number one, cast out devils. Anywhere you see demonic oppression, cast them out. Mark 16, 17, he said, in my name, cast out devils. Most of you don't cast out demons. You think demons are cast out in church. There are more demons in your workplace than in church. There are times when you enter your office, you notice demonic oppressions. You begin to resist them in prayer. Sometimes you go to the office two hours before time. You lock the door and address all of the demons locking around so that they don't have a place. Otherwise, they will manipulate men in that office and bring you down. Cast out demons. Learn it. Jesus casted out devils in the market. He cast out devils everywhere he went to. You must learn how to cast out devils using your authority in the name of Jesus. Number two, wrestle principalities. He said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. If the devil wants to pull you down, tell him he will go down first. And anything God tells you to do, do it with all your life. There are some of you here, God will tell you, pray at night. If you need to shut down six to sleep so that you wake up at night to pray, shut down. Your destiny depends on it. Because if you don't wrestle him down, he will wrestle you down. So learn to wrestle. A weak Christian will be a victim any day, any time. Learn to wrestle. We have pastors wrestling for everybody. So people come to church only for prophetic words. There is an extent prophetic words will take you. There are things that you will fight for yourself. And if you can't fight for yourself, you will see few people testify every week and you'll be wondering when it's my turn. Learn to wrestle. The psalmist said in Psalm 144 verse 1, The Lord teaches my hands to fight and my fingers to war. Number three, avoid sin and sinful life if you want to win over Satan. Because if you allow sin to corrupt you, your faith can't produce result. That's the danger of sin. It may not necessarily, it does, but sometimes it may not even hinder the devil. It will stop your own faith from working. The Bible said in 1 Timothy 1.17, it says, holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith, have shipwrecked their faith. So some people's faith can't work because sin has silenced their faith. Number four, avoid unbiblical practices. Some of you, your problem came when you started baiting with salt. Some of you, your problem started when you started coming outside by 12 midnight naked to pray. The Bible never told us God will answer prayers because we prayed naked. On biblical practices, do we pray naked? Yes, if you are baiting, you can pray. But the idea of taking off your shirt around 12 midnight for God to hear you, you will meet Sambalat and Tobah. Oh Lord, I'm standing naked. Who told you that nakedness has authority in the courts of heaven? Jesus said, in my name, he gave you what to come in. Come in the name of Jesus, not in your nakedness. I don't know where people learn these things from. And that's why many prophets, false prophets, false apostles have slept with innocent young ladies. They go to the river by 12 midnight to pray. I know warfare can be done at midnight. But all of this, oh, I'm naked. I must bait around to it. Oh, where did you learn it from? See, in God's mercy, he can honor your faith. But he said, in the days of ignorance, God overlooks. But now he asks all men to repent and come to the knowledge of the truth. There are certain places where people say they get favor when they sleep with men of God. 
Ah, that's an anointed man. Oh. There's oil on that line. When you touch him, things will enter you. Barbaric practices that is pushed into the body of Christ by men, creatures of lewdness. Some, they bait them on the altar. They come to the altar. They are baiting them for favor. That you take your bath on the altar of God. Your life can't be the same. And they are, they are drowning in the hands of demons. Don't get involved in unbiblical practices. Listen. Trust what the Bible tells us and live according to the injunctions of the finished works of Christ. Your life will be victorious. Telling you why many are enslaved. Some people are washing themselves with salt to sanctify themselves so that every reproach on their lives will go salt. When we were washed by the blood of Jesus, that's not enough. It's salt that they need. And because the person who told you wore a long gown with red uh, robe and, and with a big uh, cross and it's jumping, you reach us. You ancient Zion skin, Kadosh. You reign, you reign, you reign. hear me tonight my body is to give you instructions to practice that's why I took my time maintaining my tempo to explain these things I told you there are manifestations that we can't explain in doctrine expressly but that does not give us license to practice things that are outside doctrine you'll be enslaved don't allow your desperation make you do things that are not in the Bible you will become a victim and your deliverance may never happen. Stay within the, the confines of scriptures, what is revealed and what the body of Christ believes in. Your problem is not peculiar to you. Many have gone through that path, they've been delivered. You can't remain there. He sent his word to Jacob, he lightened upon Israel. Have you learned something tonight? Have you learned something tonight? Now lift your right hand toward heaven and begin to enforce it in prayer. Let's pray for two minutes. Two minutes. And then I make a simple declaration. Kados, you are mighty on your truth. You read, you read, you read. You run, you run, you run. Maro vara kapete kete kete kete. Rika prakdo sopra kapata tira paragata. You run, you run, you run. I want to pray for one set of people tonight. One set of people. There are people who are going through cycles and patterns of the bloodline. Some of you have noticed a pattern of death. 
Some of you have noticed a pattern of stagnation. Some of you have noticed a pattern of terminal diseases. And you have been fighting those things, which is right. But now you understand the protocol. That you identify the pattern. You shut the gate. You enforce the finished works and you ask for mercy. How do you shut the gate? You shut the gate through genuine repentance. I want to pray for everybody standing here tonight who has seen patterns, repeated patterns that seem not to go and has been fighting a battle of futility. In the next one minute, I want you to check. Look into your family. Find out that weakness of flesh that Satan has built a throne on that is using to afflict your family. Take time. Pray now. Go back in the spirit and check it. When you find it, we are going to repent. We are going to give room for genuine repentance. And we will break patterns. We will break patterns tonight. Can you go ahead and pray in one minute? Oh, he and I do double and oh, I do double and oh, Baro Pateke Faragapata Toa, Zegate de Pondos, Separacapatoria Baba Badados, and I do double and oh, I do double and oh, oh, he be the Abata Kibiti. And I do double and oh, I do Some of you will be shocked how easy it is to stop patterns that has lasted for aeons. You have not known how to shut gates. God told me, drunkenness, lying, pride, immorality. If you shut them out, no prince can afflict you. And it has been so till you date. Now, I want to pray for those who want to end patterns. Some people spoke to me this week. I was so broken with sympathy. From first son, second, third, even to the children, all forms of affliction, patterns. If you have explained your family and you have seen the weaknesses of flesh that even yourself has made a habit which has become the throne that Satan has and you want to shut that gate tonight. You want to end that pattern forever tonight. I want you to come forward. Let's put an end to some cycles forever and ever. Those of you watching online, you can place your hand on your chest. If you will repent genuinely, one declaration, you'll be shocked. Satan is not strong. He just hides himself in mysteries. Patterns. Some is smoking. Some is drunkenness. Some is womanizing. Some is lying. I know you are a Christian. I know Christ died for you. But you have given too much room to Satan. You want to shut that gate? So that certain cycles will stop. Let your prayers not be hindered. Oh, he and I do double and oh, oh, do double and oh, oh, he be the air. Ah, Hey, hey, hey. Ah, hey, hey. 
sometimes what you need is not a wristband. It's not to buy the picture of a man of God. That's not what you need. Those who do it, I don't know the revelations they have. I respect their revelation. But I'm telling you, if you leave gates open, Satan will enter and he will exploit it. You want to stop the devil, shut the gate. If you give him a place, don't blame him when he exploits you. Whatever it is, you are repenting from tonight. I know you've given your heart to Christ. You are not here to give your heart to Christ. But after giving your heart to Christ, there is a practice of sin in your bloodline that you are an apostle of, you are an advocate of. That's what you are coming to drop before the altar. And this is not an emotional thing. This is a legalistic thing. Whatever that thing is, you know it. You know it. Right now, as you place your hand on your chest, surrender that iniquity. Lord, call it by name. Forget about who is standing next to you. This is the battle. This is the warfare. This is the warfare. From today, I separate from drunkenness forever. From today, I severe myself from womanizing. From today, I severe myself from lying. From today, I severe myself from pride. From today, I severe myself from malice. From today, I severe myself from bitterness. I drop all of those patterns. Lord, grace, 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 grace to drop this yoke. I've given Satan authority for too long. I've given Satan the advantage for too long. Paul said, less Satan has an advantage over us. We are not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. Every advantage I have given Satan, I take it back tonight. I take it back tonight. I take it back tonight. Can you pray like someone who is aggressive? He said when he became tired with the yoke, he will break it off his shoulders. You are breaking off a yoke off your shoulder. When you become tired, you will break the yoke. I'm tired of the cycle of death. I'm tired of the cycle of stagnation. 40 years women, 38 years women cannot get married. First class graduates cannot get jobs. I'm tired of the cycle of affliction. Everybody must not be diabetic. Everybody must not be hypertensive. We shut the gates. We shut the gates. We shut the gates. We shut the gates. We gave Satan the authority. Now in repentance and brokenness, we take it back. Makete karato bakaya. Zezezeva. 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 Bakito pakatora. Ragabada satatane. Adeliga pakeria. Barondos kafrakta. Liga paruda datina datosh. Eriado tapana tatatina taka. Bando, bando, bando. Atetete rakatoni. Shaba rakata. Alelele, Baperoni, Bagabura, Zahela, Mentete, Akeradia, Baurado, Ataya. Pray in the spirit. I'm telling you what we are doing here. He has no respect for title. You can be an apostle, yet stagnated for 30 years. You can be a prophet, yet afflicted with sickness. You can be a priest. If you don't shut the gate, Satan will make mess of you. Boruata, Ketekato, Bakatoto, Areketuna, Baragatuash, Zayata, Zayata, Afefepala, Bararuna, Manteke, Abarado da Capatua, Jagoto, Tatatana, Bararoto, Dagatiata, Elelecato, Baroto, Zekene, Dariato, Baratata, Antetete, Aracatuna, Bambaria, Darotash, 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 Ila Capatate, Zopapaya. Manto parete feketo. Yahela pele. Yahela, yahela. Asine mayende kakana. Ove vavarana. Ayalate banderi kapatina. Sekayanda burua. Eriando mambela lule ela. Apapapani mangali gagana. Gandalali alalalila ata. Karatos kefak. Kefaktina. Bantetari baragatina tagata. Oma reterira. Jela Mande perro do poco posco para bata Bante que te We cross every pattern We cross every legality We cross 
every fleshly tendency tonight we provoke emancipation Zofane Parita Faferakis Kabate Zozo Zavina Maragadia Jaka From the depths of your heart genuinely and grace will be supplied to help you pathway with that affliction forever with that legality forever with that fleshly tendency forever no more secrecy no alcoholism no womanizing no lying no bitterness no backbiting no hatred no competition the weaknesses the weaknesses that give satan a gate that gives him a throne in my life I remove it now, Mamena Munaka, Beruata Tafakuta, Zegetota Baragadosh, Shakai. Can we travel? Travel, travel. In the name of Jesus. Now lift your hands toward heaven. Jesus defeated Satan. Satan will be powerful in your life. To the degree that you allow him and the way you allow him is through the tendencies of flesh now i'm gonna pray three prayers number one the grace to help you that these things you have dropped you will not be like the swine that goes back to the mold after you have been washed paul said i continue to this day because the lord help me father in the name of jesus i want to hear thunderous amen you must be in agreement in the name of jesus on ground online in the name of jesus receive grace to live above everything you have submitted tonight you will not go back to alcoholism. Amen. You will not go back to womanizing. Amen. You will not go back to lying. Amen. You will not go back to pride. Amen. You will not go back to bitterness, envy and competition. In the name of Jesus. Everything you have dropped on the altar tonight is buried forever. Is buried forever. In the name of Jesus. He said there is an abomination under the sun. Princes are trekking. Beggars are riding on horses. This is the manipulation that makes that possible. When princes behave like servants, they will live like servants. He said a man in honor that knoweth not is like the beast of the field that perishes. Every time we live by the dictates of flesh, we dethrone ourselves so that Satan can have an advantage. But tonight, that thing lives your life forever. That pornography lives forever. That masturbation lives forever. In the name of Jesus. Number two, he said that the communication of your faith might become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you you are the righteousness of god in christ jesus i decree and declare manifest that righteousness now he said that same spirit that raised up jesus from the dead lives in you i decree and declare manifest the power of the holy ghost now he said he that has the son has life eternal life is in you i decree and declare manifest the provisions of eternal life now in the name of jesus hear me everything jesus died for you to be walk into it now he said you are a king and a priest walk into it now he said you are the righteousness of god walk into it now he said you are anointed of the spirit walk into it now he said you have the life of god walk into it now in the name of Jesus, manifest, 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 in the name of Jesus.
And finally, he said, he who the son of man sets free, he is free indeed. Now we take authority over Satan. He had the right to establish patterns in your family and in your life because of the advantage you gave him. Now it has been removed. And so we decree every demon, every prince, and every witch cooperating with Satan to bring affliction to your families. They are judged now. They are judged now. We write a commandment. Every priest that will not repent and leave your matter in 14 days, they die by fire. If they do not repent in 14 days, they die by fire. He said to subvert a man in his cause. The Lord approve it not. Everyone standing against the fulfillment of your destiny. If they don't give way, they will go down by fire. In the name of Jesus. Now, every demon that has been assigned to your, your name or your family that comes at certain cycles and certain seasons six months one year two years three years five years seven years we decree by the power in the name of jesus get out of their lives now get out of their lives now get out of their lives now in the name of jesus and we decree right now every principality every power every ruler of darkness every spiritual wickedness that has created a law around your manifestation and that of your family the bible said he who the son of man sets free is free indeed we decree your liberty from their bondage in the name of jesus he said the name of the lord is a strong tower the righteous run out therein and they are saved. We decree your salvation now in the name of Jesus. Every Egyptian spirit that has kept you in bondage by the blood of the Lamb will break their powers now. Every Babylonian spirit that has put you in bondage will decree by the testimony of the prophetic their hold is broken now. Every Assyrian spirit that has put you in bondage, we decree by the power of priesthood, their bondage breaks now. Go and prosper. In the name of Jesus, I replace stagnation with speed. I replace death with life. I replace sickness with health. I replace shame with glory. I replace poverty with prosperity. I replace cause with blessings. Go forward and prosper. Go forward and prosper. Go forward and prosper. In the name of Jesus. Somebody give the Lord a show. Hear this. As you return. That affliction ends forever. Yeah. Go and write it down. I have entered my victory. As you return, only testimonies are permitted to abound in your life. Wherever you are falling before, you will stand there to rejoice in the name of Jesus. He said, When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion. He said we were like them that dream dreams. Then was our mouth filled with laughter. I prophesy over you. Your life shall be filled with laughter. Your mouth shall be filled with laughter. And from this night, begin to have miracles. Those who are sick with terminal infirmities, they are healed. Those who are in bondage by demons, they are healed. Those who are frustrated by manipulations of hell, they are liberated. 
This is your emancipation ceremony. Somebody shout! Sabaoth, Yahweh, Sabaoth, Yahweh, Sabaoth, Yahweh, Sabaoth, Yahweh, Sabaoth, Yahweh, Sabaoth, Yahweh. That's your way to your seat that you celebrate. On ground online, congratulations! Oh Lord! The King of Glory, Yahweh, Sabaoth. Yahweh, Sabah, oh Lord, He's the King of the glory. King of Yahweh, glory. Sabah. Yahweh, Sabah. Yahweh, 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 Give the Lord the show. Now hear this. Walk in the consciousness of victory from now. Don't go back saying, Oh, this thing happening in our family. It has been changed. Go with a new consciousness. And hear me. When God does anyone, write it down and celebrate. When he does another one, write it down and celebrate the same way you recorded your woes now you will record your blessings somebody give the lord a show thank you father this is the wisdom that governs the judgments of god and it's on the premise of this wisdom that true emancipation is granted to the people of God. Congratulations. Tonight is your night. And whatever the Lord doeth, the Bible said it shall abide forever. Give the Lord a big hand clap as you take your seat. So we have come to the end of the series. I had to stretch to finish it. But trust me, you didn't hear what you thought you heard. Go back, listen to the message. And you will discover many things that you should learn and apply. And the Lord will bless you and make you a blessing to others. Those of you who are watching online, listen again. Share it. Let many people get to hear it. Publish the word of God. Learn to publish the word of God. Don't just hear it and be blessed. Put it on your platform. Let somebody hear and be blessed. And God will continue to multiply you. In two minutes we are out. God bless you. Have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Then say this short prayer. Lord, I admit I am a sinner. I need and want your forgiveness. I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. In your precious name, Amen. Congratulations to you. If you have just said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve Him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you.